this is a conspiracy. That's what this is. Just begging to course its way through your veins. Let's just for a moment speculate, shall we? You're into comic books, aren't you? I'm a nerd. But you do like comic books. Comic books aren't just for sad nerds anymore. Objection, calls for speculation, move to strike. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. You think we need one more? You think we need one more? All right, we'll get one more. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Spectales, a comic book podcast. I'm Jake, he's Jesus, and this is episode eight. First of all, thanks to everybody for listening. Jesus and I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, we've really enjoyed connecting with people on social. Uh, people have been reaching out to us, kind of telling us some of their own grail tales, and it's been a lot of fun. So thank you all very much. Feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at spec underscore tales underscore podcast. Uh, we like hearing from people, so let us know. And uh, while you're at it, if you've got some time and you enjoy the show, go ahead and throw us a couple of stars or whatever review on Apple Podcasts. We'd certainly appreciate it. Uh, today, we've got a special guest lined up. But before we do that, uh, hey, Zeus, what's going on? What's going on, buddy? It's very, very good to be here on the Shang-Chi weekend that we will not discuss at not all. Not discuss because you haven't seen it yet, but me and our guest, Joel, have seen it. So maybe we'll get into it. I don't know. You might have to mute or something. Uh, it will speaking, not happen. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, uh, you might know our guest uh, on Instagram or YouTube as Newbie Comics. Uh, Joel, how's it going? What's going on, everybody? Newbie here. Nice. Thank you for joining us, Joel. Yeah, man. Hey, thanks, thanks for having me, brother. Joel newbie, I'm gonna probably juggle back and forth. I'll 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 see what I can do about that. Yeah. Uh <laughs> so how's, how's everybody doing? So Joel, you and I, we've seen Shang-Chi. No spoilers right now, but just in general, you liked it, right? I loved Shang-Chi. Not Shang-Chi, Shang right? Shang-Chi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They even play around. Dude, honestly, um, I'm not gonna lie, I was scared at the beginning. Um thinking you know like like beginning like when it was announced right i was like oh man i don't think this is gonna be good like i don't know if this is a good thing and i went in like with my dc perspective you know very low and then i came out of that movie <laughs> like damn like probably top 10 i'll say it probably probably top 10 for me that's yeah. a spoiler that's a spoiler it so a I'm spoiler. Just like, <laughs> I, I saw the i saw the movie with my 13 year old son immediately when it was done he looked at me and he said best marvel movie ever and i mean you know knee-jerk reaction but still like it's it's so good you immediately put it into that into that realm right that's that was that was what i took away hey zeus you gotta watch it soon so we can do it because next episode i'm not holding back everything's coming out i don't care if you've seen it or not you just hey zeus will not be Hey, this will not be hosting it. next episode. I'm boycotting <laughs> because it was spoiled for me on this podcast right now. I can't believe you guys spoiled <laughs> it. Uh, now I, I, we're gonna watch it. Uh, actually, my son wanted to go watch it tonight, uh, but he, he was also wanting to go play basketball. So we're gonna go Sunday. I think I think the showing is 11 a.m. I'm watching the 11 a.m. Sunday showing. So by nice. Sunday afternoon, I should be ready to go. Yeah, I expect a text. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Interestingly enough, though, like there was not the same anticipation for Black Widow. Can we at no. least all agree with that? Well, and I, I've already seen that it broke uh, Black Widow's Thursday record of of uh, of sales. So it's at eight point eight million for Thursday showings, which is uh, I think two million more than Black Widow, and nice. it's, it's and it's on a worse weekend than Black Widow came out. So yeah, there's more anticipation for it. Well, it it to, I think the problem is they released Black Widow after the character had died, mm -hmm. right? The character died, mm -hmm. so you knew this was a prequel. This was like a, a gap filler movie, and ultimately, it just I, it took a lot of the the fun out of it in terms of watching it, trying to learn what's next, right? Because that's what everybody wants to know: what's next mm -hmm. for the MCU? And Black Widow, you know what? Maybe there was a lot of hidden stuff in there. I'm sure there was something. That's what's next for the MCU in that movie. They they don't release it for nothing. But, it, you know, uh, Shang-Chi definitely had that. And it, it really hit yeah. the spot. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people have been waiting for it. And with Black Widow, like you mentioned, the prequel, I mean, it, it begs the question, how good would that movie have been or been received if it was if it was done before, you know, her character died in the in the 
in the actual timeline. I think I think it would have been received very well because she was a very popular character for a long time. Yeah, uh, it just sucks that I don't know the way it worked out. It, it had to do it afterwards. Yeah, I I I think they did a disservice to the character and the just the story overall because it would have fit well um, mm-hmm. in that part in that timeline. So, all right. Uh, so newbie, here's what we do on this show. We're going to start everything off. We're each going to talk about the most recent book we purchased or purchased something that we purchased comic related. So we'll go around the horn. We'll talk about that. And then when we come back, I'm going to turn the mic over to you completely. And you are going to entertain us with a grail tale. All right. And then right. Once no, we- no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> so start thinking now if you have it. Oh, I got a love story and I got a. Uh, what, what would we call that? A heartbreaking one. So, no, I guess that's the same thing. We got a love story or a, a friendship breaking my spirit. You know, one of those. So yeah, uh, well, you got we'll, we'll get to as much as we can then. Yeah, it's gonna be good because uh, they both. Yeah, they both sound compelling. And then we always close out the show with uh, with uh, one spec. So we'll go around the horn again. Everybody toss out what a book they're specking on or, or they're looking at, and that'll then we'll wrap it up. Sound good? Sounds good. Perfect. All right. Uh, hey, Zeus, you're up. All right. What I bought this week, uh, I actually went to a LCS that I don't normally go to. It's a little it's a, a little bit of ways out. And uh, I was trying to get there and do my digging before I had to go pick up my kids. So uh, I was kind of doing it quick, but time flew. But I was able to, and I, I go there because I know that they always have a lot of backstock, recent backstock. So obviously, not terror news. Uh, came out. I wasn't on Noctera. I'm not buying them uh, to spec them. I want to read them. Jake told me that it's actually a good story as well. Uh, he loves Scott Snyder. So I was able to pick up Noctera 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I was able to pick up those from the back back bins, uh, but not number one. So I still got to get number one. I picked up, um, this is calling back to one of our earlier episodes, uh, Reptile number one, two, and three. Every time I see those, I, I pick them up, and I actually got a cool variant that I hadn't seen before. Uh, nice. The Werewolf by Night also uh, went off, and again, this guy has a bunch of like recent back stock at cover price, so I picked up uh, Werewolf by Night three, four, and five. Cool. And then I picked up uh, a Fantastic Four that we also talked about Uh recently it actually was i think an episode two with uh chris of uh, vancouver comic junkie is the one where it's uh dr doom fighting uh the beyonder i believe 319 319 that's the look one at that. look so at that I, dropping I, knowledge I, I i picked it up it was i mean it's it's i mean it's minty dude it's 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 really crisp nice. uh so i was i was happy and i got it for like i think it was like three dollars or four bucks so really th- that's so that's what i picked up today and that was that was all one shop you 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 pulled that haul all from one all from uh, one shop yeah nice. yeah nice work uh newbie i know you've been doing some uh some traveling i've been seeing the posts on instagram you've been headed to a lot of lcs's that are not your local lcs's right yeah man um you know just had a bit of free time oddly enough and uh, i thought you know what let's go somewhere i haven't been um so yeah and, and you know i've made so many like friends locally and like around the area where I am. So um, a lot of people are like, Hey man, come meet me or come. So I just go, dude, it's, it's fun. But uh, yeah, I've been picking up a lot of fantastic four um, outside of Iron Man. That's probably like my thing. Um, so yeah. I went to a few like flea markets and stuff like that. I've been trying to get on, you know, fantastic four books that mostly, you know, people aren't thinking about um, Jake, you, you might remember because we've had the conversation with a few people where you, kind of communicate with but like x-men right like there's a lot of books now that were like two bucks three bucks like four or five years ago and now they're mm-hmm. like 25 50 100 and it was like low stuff right and i, I think the same thing's gonna happen with fantastic four but like hey zeus um you know i've been trying to pick up fantastic four 319 i picked up two copies of that um the second trifecta is what i call it in fantastic four because we all know fantastic four has the the trinity or yeah, Trinity, not trifecta, but, um, you know, 48, 49, 50, I've been picking up a lot of, uh, 243, 244, 245. Oh, so, you've got your own, uh, Trinity, huh? Yeah. That I, dude, uh, 240, 43 is that, you know, 
iconic Galactus, uh, John Byrne cover, 244. Yep. It's yep. a book I specced on many, many moons ago. And now, like, you know, not not to say it's because of me, but, like, that book in a 9.8 is, like, a $1,000 book. Then you got 245, Franklin Richards as an adult. Like, I love that cover of Sue Storm. Like, it's just, yeah. Um, so anytime I get those. But, uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to pick up a few copies of those. So I First Yeah, I actually – I picked up a a near mint copy of that uh, the Sue Richards. I, I actually, honestly, I don't remember what's the number on that one. Two forty five. Two forty. So I remember picking it up. It was like six months ago, uh, because I wanted to. I really wanted to get Fantastic Four Annual Number Six. Ooh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was on that book for a long time, but I could just never, you know, the right one never came my way. Right, like it just didn't work out. But I remember spotting that book at my lcs near mint copy uh super clean for eight bucks or something like that it was yeah, so, yeah. so I, I i it was but it was pristine like the thing is probably at least a nine six so i grabbed it i i, I love that cover uh with her on that and um well, uh, we always talk about like on my end with, with like my guys is you know always covering your bases Right. Um, and what I mean by that is like, you know, Fantastic Four Annual Six. Yeah, it's it's Franklin Richards as a baby and Nihilus. But like, why not get 245 and, and 376? Right. That's Franklin as adult. And as if adult you're already player, specking as, on him. Right. Yeah. yeah. If right, you're already specking on him, he has more than one book. Exactly. exactly. Right. And, and they're so cheap. So like, why not? Like, you never know. The I have like five raw copies of that 245, and then yep. I was lucky enough because I have it as an alert. Um, I had it on like my comic shop, and f- literally it was like I got the notification. It was like, hey, this book came up nine eight CGC seventy bucks Canadian. I was like, yep, and I was like, I oh, remember like, damn. Part, like just dropped because I I was only using PayPal at the time. Like I I didn't have my credit <laughs> card in it, and my my PayPal didn't have anything. I'm like my, I remember my credit card falling. My girlfriend's like, why, why are you rushing? I'm like, I just, shut up. I'm going to do Somebody's going to grab it. You know, like I, didn't want, I didn't want to lose that book. And I remember like, you know, messaging uh, Chris being like, Chris, you know, like, and it felt like I just like finished fighting. So I was like, Chris. <laughs> he's like, what did, what did you do? And I'm like, oh man, I just, I just picked up a 9.8, 2.45. And he's like, oh shit, okay. But like, you know, he's looking at me like I'm crazy. But like, yeah, it's just like how much I love not the like not only the book, but like just like the hunt and the the, the moment of the find and getting yeah, it. Man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So nice. Okay, yeah. so uh I I've got something fun that I've never done for my recent most recent purchase. Uh, I bought a collection and it, it, it was a small collection. So this, this was something that it was really weird how it came about. I had bought a, I bought a book on eBay and it was hilarious because based on the listing, I knew the guy didn't know a lot. So I sent him another message saying, Hey, how are you planning on packaging this, this book up? <laughs> and I, I should, you're not, he sent me in response a, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to package the book up. And he sent me a link to something he found on the internet for how to package a comic book or how to ship a comic book. (laughs) And it was a tutorial on exactly step-by-step how to package and ship a comic book. And I tell you what, he did it to a T. I got the book (laughs) uh, and it was really, honestly, I might've overpaid by a little bit for that book. It, you know, it, it wasn't in the best condition uh however i messaged the guy i told him thank you the book did arrive and again i was the one who who paid for a book i couldn't see a photo of basically so it wasn't like it was on him for false advertising the guy clearly just saw what the other people were charging on ebay he matched their prices somewhere in there and he said or best offer so that was on me but when i thanked him for sending the book and everything telling him i got everything okay he said, Hey, I'm, you know, actually trying to get rid of, you know, a, a small collection of mine. I don't know what these things are worth, you know, just so on and so forth. You know, are you, are you interested in, in more? And I said, well, do you have a list? Do you have photos? And he goes, I can do photos. Uh, and he sent me photos of the, and it was like 130 books, something like that. And they ranged literally from silver age all the way to the early nineties. Anyway, 
I took a look. Most of it is minor keys. So I I got I got the collection. So I got books like this was a really this was one of my favorites in it. Invaders number one. This is a really clean copy of the book. It is uh it is near mint. It's uh I don't know. It, it's probably you know nine two something nine four something like that somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, I got a Eternals annual number one, king size annual. It's another really, this was one of the other really clean, clean books from that, the collection. Uh, for those listening, I'm actually lifting books up and showing these guys. <laughs> I apologize. You can't see them. Uh, this was probably the biggest book in the collection. Uh, Nova number one. Uh, this is a, a really, really nice clean copy. This is a high nine. And it's a newsstand at that. So that was one of the books actually that really put me over. I was like, I need that book. Um, and then, you know, this uh, Star Wars 68. Uh, this one is not a near mint. It needs a press and clean something fierce. But, you know, it's still not a terrible book. And then I don't really even – this is the first Green Lantern book I've ever owned. And I've it's seen Green, that one before. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Green Lantern number 10. Uh, and it's a, it's a silver age book. It's a 12 cent book. So, uh, and this is probably, I don't know if I'm lucky it hits a five, right? It's not, um, I think that's, it's in that ballpark anyway. So it's a bunch of minor keys, nothing major or anything like that. There were a couple disappointments. Cause when I looked at the photos, there was a she Hulk number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, when that book showed up, the cover was detached so a couple of problems with that didn't like it but this guy really let me set the price uh i you know i talked with jesus about it of course uh kind of getting you know discussing where a price could be for it i you know it wasn't too bad i like i said there's a bunch of other minor keys uh it's got the entire outside of nova number one there's nova number two and three which are are great books i think nova's uh still well, I don't it's want to a, undervalue because I don't want one of your listeners to be like, what is this guy talking about? The price is crazy. I just think that like at the at the price point it's at where it could be down the road, I, I think there's huge potential there. Yeah, I think there's still a higher ceiling, especially yeah. if the character um, hits the MCU. Exactly. Uh, there was the, you know, the entire uh, Craven's Last Hunt run in, Ooh, in the yeah. uh, 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 collection, which was, again, another thing that I was just like, oh, yeah, I want that. Uh, and then the Spider-Man 35th anniversary, uh, you remember they did the the hologram covers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, was it the red one? or No, that's Web of Spider-Man, right? It's, no, no, no. Uh, but it, yeah, I'm so, so it was all of them. So oh, it was all of them. Okay. Red, yeah. So, green, blue. I, okay. So damn Black, it, I'm red. wrong. It was three of the four. I'm missing okay. the green one. It didn't have the green. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the copies are actually in really nice shape. Uh, the worst thing about all of it is I <laughs> – I didn't think he was going to ship it as fast as he did. I did not have any bags or boards. I still don't. I, I just got this collection yesterday and I don't have any bags and boards. So I still got to go out and get some because all the bags, m- most of these books don't have boards. It's about 50, 50%, 60% don't have boards on the back side of them. So, I mean, it, it's not the mintiest fresh collection ever, but it's in decent shape. And there were enough books that it was a lot of fun to go through. I, you know, I still need to price a lot. There's a lot of books where it's like, I've never seen this one before ever. Um, but most of the old Silver Age books are like fighting army books, um, mm. which is, I believe it's a DC title. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, None of them are valuable in, in the, from what I could tell. Uh, uh, they're not. There's a few, but if you put them all together as as a lot, yeah. I think they go for a lot on on eBay. Uh, but th- there's probably about five in this of the yeah. the the collection. So anyway, I'm still digging through it. But as far as recent purchases, I'd never purchased a collection before. It was just an interesting, you know, I guess Thanks. attempt. And I do feel like with the books that I got. Um, there were a few gems that hadn't really, you know, I didn't really, you know, when I was originally going through the photos and stuff, didn't really have an eye on that, uh, invaders, Mm. uh, or the Eternals annual. Those, those weren't the ones that initially caught my eye. So when they showed up and I saw how nice they were, I was like, oh yeah, that was worth it. So, you know, those two books alone could potentially end up 
paying for the collection. I, you know, I don't know. We'll have to see how they grade. So anyway, that was what I recently got. So I'm kind of in the, in the same boat as you, like with, with like going to all these like new shops, flea markets and stuff like that. Like I like to put them in like a fresh, you know, board and bag. Cause like, you never know, like some of these books have been in like, you know, an attic or something or in a flea market for like ever. Like I, I I've had so many times where like I'm going through long boxes and there's like bugs coming out and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. but like I always, when I get home, I'm like, yeah, changing this out, put, you know, well, like, right now I'm at that point where I'm like, I got like a little bit of a stack and I'm like, okay, I need new bags. I need new boards and I, I don't have it. So yeah. Same boat. I had basically five bags and boards, which were basically just from books that I had ended up shipping off to get graded. And so I had a very, like literally five and, and I took the ones, the ones that I took off or out, the bags were yellow. Like when I crumpled them all up, I was like, this is just a big yellow ball. Like it, they, mm-hmm. like they had been sitting there for 30 years is what I'm assuming. So mm-hmm. I, a, anyway, I don't know how or why this, co- there is no rhyme or reason to the collection either. Like I'm looking at it, like, why do they like, it's so sporadic, some, some marble yeah. and it's some silver yeah. age. So I don't know. I, I need to just ask the guy like, Hey, what's the story behind this collection? Because honestly, how did all these books end up being together when they seem to have no connection whatsoever? But that's for another day, I guess. That's a different uh, grail tale on that one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, all right. But speaking of grail tales, Let's go with the sad one, newbie. I've been thinking about this. I think, uh, I, you know what? Heartbreak? You know, the heartbreak. Well, I, the... Now I'm guessing which one the heartbreak is. I, you know what? I just I want the Fantastic Four number four. That's the one. Okay. All right. That's the that's the the stupid friend that's not around anymore. Oh. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I chose right. I chose right. <laughs> um, you know, you know, a lot of people who who know me know. You know, again, you know, Fantastic Four. Um, I've I've been on Submariner or Namor, whichever identity you want to call him as, uh, for a very long time. Like I, I always enjoyed the character. Um, so this story takes place in 2012, 2013. So we were at Niagara Falls Comic Con because I'm from Niagara, up in Canada. And um, Man, at the time, like, I mean, you could do this, you could probably do this like five years from now, right? Where you're like, oh man, this book was just like 800 bucks or like, you know, it was just a thousand, right? Yep. So I had, and the funny thing is at the time there was uh, an Iron Man 1, 6.5, and it was going for 400 bucks. And I remember saying to to my friend at the time, whose name is Norm. So Norm, if you're out there, I'm talking about you, not another Norm. Um, <laughs> um so uh so, so i remember saying to, to him at the time i'm like man that's like that's a book like i would love to have but like i'm not paying 400 bucks for for this i yeah i think it was like 375 or 400 at the time and i was like i'm not gonna pay this but i was like always obsessed with getting that submariner number number four so we go to comic-con fantastic um, four number four right yeah, so that's that's number number I just want yeah, just want to clarify. Yep. Yeah, so so we go there, we go to Comic Con, and there's like maybe four copies, and I'm talking, I'm not even talking like 0. 0.5, 1.8. I'm talking like five, five point oh, six point oh, seven point oh, and I remember vividly, there was a six point oh for six hundred bucks. I remember it like yesterday, man. I remember the guy had the stickers. So he had like these yellow, well, like the yellow stuff that you would find at a dollar store, like the, the notepads, right? And the post-it really, notes? Yeah, the post-it notes, sorry. And he had it in, and this is how sick of detailed memory I have. Like he had it um, in red marker and he had the 600 on the post-it note to the right. So you would see like the grade and then the price and then the book. And uh, I remember being like, like telling him, and I don't know if Norm knew what the book was. I think he thought it was something else. Um, And yeah, man, so we're there and, you know, nobody's picking the book up and I pass it like, you know, eight, nine times. And then finally I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy this. I I really think that this character is going to hit. I really think this is going to be something like he's, he's got to, you know, something, you know, it it just, it just felt like one of those gut feelings. Mm Mm-hmm. So I asked the guy, I'm like, hey man, can I can I hold it? 
And, uh, <laughs> Can I just touch it? This is like before, like <laughs> this is like before selfies were cool and all that. Like, so I, I didn't want to take a picture with with the book, right? Like, it would just felt stupid taking a picture with a book that's not yours. Um, but I remember as like it got to me, I, I would I did this like stupid noise where I was like, oh, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm goofy like that, right? I remember the guy laughed. So like at that moment, I thought, okay, now I, now this guy knows like I I want the book, and like I'm a terrible poker player, so like if you have a price on your book, like I'm paying that price because like, like <laughs> oh man. Um, Jesus is just crawling right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Jesus hasn't just played that. sticker price since he was in the womb, I bet. Yeah, <laughs> you know? So, um, so yeah, so I, I finally get the book. I'm like, oh. so I, I'm like looking at it. And then, you know, trust the old Norm comes and he's like, man, what, what do you got there? I'm like, oh, it's, it's Fantastic Four. And I'll never forget the words he says. He goes, you really want a guy in a Speedo naked on your comic book? <laughs> And I remember just like looking at him, just like, I mean, like, like he, he's not gonna like look like that, you know, like in the movie or anything if he ever shows up. And I remember him just he just repeated, he's like, dude, no matter how you put it, it is a dude on a speedo. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> And I put it back. I was like, uh, I remember, dude, and honestly, it, kills no. me to say, it kills me to say it because I remember leaving there. And, and again, this goes back to me refusing to pay like 375 or 400 for that Iron Man one at the time. I remember leaving there being like, no, man, you know what? You're right. Like, maybe I should go get that Iron Man that I, I like. That's the book I should really get. So the next day. Uh, we go to, or no, sorry. I had to wait till Tuesday because the shops here, if they go to the con, they're closed the Sunday and Monday. So they reopen on Tuesday. Right. So I remember going on Tuesday thinking, all right, I'm going to get the Iron Man. Like this is going to be my, my, my huge purchase. And uh, I remember them being like, no man, the Iron Man sold. And I was like, what? And you know, the con was gone that I never saw fantastic four, number four. Um, ever at a, at a reasonable price after that. And, you know, when you look at numbers now, like what does a 6.0 go for now? Like almost five grand, something like that, maybe more. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's almost untouchable. So, yeah. So, yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> so Norm, Norm better give you a $4,000 speedo or something. I mean, that, that's, that's oh my just, God. I think I think to make this up to you, Norm needs to do a photo shoot to recreate <laughs> the cover of Fantastic Four number four, and he's playing oh, Submariner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you know, think- if you guys have ever seen that book, and I know I know you guys know the book, but if you guys have ever seen that book, um an extremely high grade. Because I mean a 6.0 is, is pretty high for that book. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the fourth issue. It's, it's an old book. Dude, the colors pop. It's a beautiful book, you know, speed or not. But the one thing I do learn, you know, like now, you know, what, eight, nine, almost nine years later is that is a perfect example of you should always go with your gut. Always go with your gut. If you want to buy a book, buy it. Don't let other people kind of, you know, um, not pressure you because like I'm not a peer pressure kind of guy, but like don't let other people like influence you know your decision right um yeah. so oh yeah, dude, and I, exactly and I, yeah and i think that's like a big thing in in the comic book community where we whether we want to admit it or not like i stopped reading comic books in 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 high school really just because you know we, we would get picked on or if you want to stop talking about that stuff because you'd get picked on and stuff and it's that's what you were letting them do is letting other people influence what yeah. you like and if that's what you like that's what you like man i mean it's, there's nothing wrong with it you know uh, it's definitely a good a good thing to say to just buy what you like and go with your gut. No, I completely agree. Hey, uh, newbie, I just wanted to. I was doing some research during that last uh, little back and forth. That Fantastic Four number four, and I ain't trying to break your heart anymore or anything like that. But have you looked at like the census numbers for that book? No. <laughs> do you do you want to know what the? I'm going to say them anyway. You should uh, close your ears if you don't want to know. Earmuffs. Earmuffs. Irma, <laughs> let me have it. Let me have it. It's only gonna make me stronger, right? Or or whatever Britney Spears lyric that song was. Really yeah. Good. Yeah. No. She, yeah. She, she had a lot of good songs. Uh. Okay. So, first of all, the the sense of the 
most common census grade for that book, and there are 1,500 total graded copies of that book, uh, which is pretty low, honestly, but it's an old book. The the highest grade or the, the most common grade is 4.0. So it's, that's really low. Even that, uh, though, I would take, oh, my God, I would take that. No, I mean, at this point, yeah, but that's that's also the most common grade. So that's where the most are in ter- for those grades. However, a 9.8 doesn't even exist. There isn't one. And then there are only six universal uh, copies of 9.6, 14, 9.4. So it's really low. Uh, Something that I tend to look at is usually if you can stay, if you can get a copy, a graded copy of a book that's in the top 20% of all the the grades, I feel like if you're in the top 20%, you're doing pretty well. Like you've got a, a book that's going to a high end on a coll- that collectible. Yeah. Uh, to hit usually to get in the top twenty percent on most books that I do research on, you've got to get, you know, a nine. Uh, you've got to get above a nine zero or something. Like for like giant size X Men, you want to get in the top twenty percent. You're literally at nine nine zero or above, right? On this book. It is the threshold to be in the top 20% is 7.0. Like it's, at, you know, and a 6.5. What were you looking at? What were you, were you looking at? Six, a 6.0 6. 6. is still in the top 29%. Like it, like you're not wrong. There just aren't very many of them. No. Like it just is. Just tell me the price, man. What, what, what price? What price? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Most recent sale of a 6.0. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> uh well this is this is stupid this isn't a real price uh so so the the fair market value for a 60 is 7750 but i'm just going to say this i don't know how this price happened somebody paid on ebay on may 28th 2021 Twelve thousand eight hundred and eighty-eight dollars. That's an eBay sale for a six O white pages copy, and that's the last time a six O. That's the last six O like, that's man, recorded on. That's easy on Go Collect. I don't like, say this lightly, but y'all need to redo that cover with the speedo and and offer it up to the comic gods as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, man. oh man, yeah, honestly, dude, honestly, man, it is one of. It is my biggest regret. And the more and more I tell this story to people always, um, you know, because when you go back and look at prices and stuff like that, um, you know, 2012, right? Um, It just always motivates me to, like, never let anybody discard me from buying what I want. Like, it just, Mm -hmm. you know. I'm trying to see, so some more recent recent sales, because that May sale for that uh, for that 6.0, that is one of the more recent sales recorded, at least on Go Collect. I'm assuming it's probably sold a, a bunch more times, you know, out on Instagram or other other venues. But there's a a 4.0 sold in June, June 22nd on Heritage. 4.0 went for one thousand nine hundred twenty dollars. So you're you're yeah you're basically to get that the the most common grade in the book. Uh, you're still spending about two grand, and that was back in June. So, uh, if if Disney or Marvel Studios ends up confirming the casting rumor that happened, not what was that a month, two months ago, whenever that casting yeah. rumor happened, mm-hmm. if Marvel Studios or Disney actually ends up confirming it, I feel like that book is just gonna it's gonna hit again. So, I know I'm not making you feel any better, but that's. <laughs> You know, um, you know, and, and without spoiling anything, like, so we've all, and I don't know, but like, we've all seen Black Panther, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, we, <clears throat> two of us so far have seen Shang Chi, right? Yeah. If they were to bring that character in and he had a solo movie, I feel like it would have the same vibe. You know, the Atlanteans and things like that mm-hmm. would be a huge mm-hmm. success, and that book would be, um, you know, probably untouchable um to many so, people uh, so what you're saying is that there's still room in that book is what you're saying you know i th- i don't know because like the you know maybe jay could could agree with me here but like you know the higher you go so like if you're buying a seven thousand dollar book you also have to understand that like 
there's only a handful of people that are going to be able to buy it, even if it reaches, say, 12 or 15 grand, right? Like, what I what I always try to tell people is like, okay, well, if you're going for, you know, more dollars in your pocket, I mean, you, you have to think like, what, you know, we all obviously have different financial, you know, numbers and, you know, finances and stuff like that and what affordability is. But like, what's the next best thing, right? Some people will argue it's Iron Man's Submariner 1. Some people will just go the Submariner number one, right? Again, another Speedo cover. Um, but like people <laughs> will gravitate towards that. And I feel like that book, I mean, even right now, that one I think at like a 6.0 is like a thousand Canadian. I mean, I think that one has the, the biggest jump and the biggest potential because the average person or even if the guy has like say a thousand or two thousand monthly or every six months to spend – He's probably not going to spend it all on Fantastic Four number four, right? He's probably going to go Submariner number one, where there's probably going to be a better return and easier to flip, right? Do you consider yourself more to be a collector, and that's what your your main process is? Like you 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 buy books so you can collect the books you want, or or are you more maybe even? You know, you you collect some, but you also sell some. Like where, where would you put that that threshold at for you? Because uh, I think that 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 real quick, because I think that that kind of dictates what you were talking about is spending the big money on like like a five hundred dollar special Marvel edition versus uh you know spending it on on lower books that you you spread out the the risk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I you know, and it's funny because like I was telling uh, I was telling Jake this um, earlier, but like. So obviously I'm, I am a collect, like you see behind me, like these, these are like my wall books are like my, my big books. Like they're, they're ones that I've, I've always wanted to collect. I've always wanted to have. Now, will they change over time? Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll sell some to, to get another one I want or like one comes down in price. Absolutely. I think we kind of are, are all collectors, but at the same time, like I love the hunt. Like I love going to these places and going through boxes and like finding stuff. Like it's very exciting for me like and it's not even about like the you know finding a book for a dollar and selling it for 10 like it's literally just the hunt like the whole process Mm -hmm. of like you know finding something and like you know you can scratch it off the list and then it's like something that you you can say like oh i found it for a dollar while you paid like 50 you know like i I don't know deep down me and jake were talking about this earlier you know it's it's like that i I do like that but at the same time i mean I, i think you know, you have to always protect your finances. Like I, I always said, I'm like the people that have a, an issue with like flippers and stuff. I'm like, if you went to Walmart and you knew that they were selling iPhones for a hundred dollars, would you not tell everybody you knew in your family, Hey, come down to Walmart, grab two or three, because we need to flip. You know what I mean? Like, that's just like, it, I don't think it matters. It, happens. What it, 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 is, it right? used to happen with all the black Friday sales. That's mm-hmm. what people were doing. I mean, that, that was, that was an issue. Yeah. Uh, I do think this is a really good place where we can transition into the next uh, part of the show, which is where we each talk about a spec. Uh, so let's, um, uh, let's go ahead. I, I think I, I'll start, uh, Jesus, you started the show with the, what you recently purchased. Mm-hmm. So I'll take this one. Um, this one is not, so my spec book is not exactly new by any means, uh, I would say I feel like it's just a book that has fallen back asleep. It was a hot book. It was a really hot book when the when Falcon and Winter Soldier was on Disney Plus. Uh, everybody was all excited about the character uh, and the new you know the new transition for the character. I'm talking about Captain America 117, the first appearance of the Falcon. Now this is uh, you know as people may be getting used to when it comes to books mm-hmm. that I spec on. This is not, I'm not telling you that it's a cheap book. I'm saying go find these books, look at what they're auctioning for. Now, not not buy it now, right? You go on eBay or you go look elsewhere. The buy it nows, people are still keeping it high because the character they just announced they're doing it a Captain America 4, right? And he's gonna be the lead. Anthony Mackey's gonna be the lead character. He's gonna be playing Captain America. So You've got it. You know, there's another there's another movie coming. If you're looking for a book that's going to find a rise, this is going to be it. Uh, But if you look at the auctions are going low because people are they've moved on and they're looking at more, quote unquote, exciting books. 
and you can just eyeball. There's, you know, there's a few I've been, this is, this literally comes straight from my watch list. I'm looking at these books and I'm seeing both the, the, if they're on auction, which most of the sellers aren't putting them on auction right now because they're not hot. Uh, but you can see there's been a couple that I've been following or watching and they've been up for a while. You know, the, you can see that these books have just been listed and then the listing times out and then they relist automatically. And anyway, so what I'm saying is you've got a movie coming. Everybody knows that as soon as trailers pop or something like that, the book takes a, a huge boost. And if you're looking for something like that, I, I mean, I think it's a it's a great book. The other thing is, I'm a huge Captain America fan. Team Cap, always. I know newbies over there cringing because he's on <laughs> Team Iron Man. Uh, Iron but Man. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm a, I'm an Iron Man fan, or excuse me, I like Iron Man, <laughs> but I'm a I'm a Cap fan first. Secret and list. and, and I, I just think this book is is it had its little time when the show was out, but. I don't. I think people forgot fast, right? They started moving on to whatever was whatever was fresh, and so it didn't get a lot of time in the sun, and it'll drop back down. So go check this book out. Put it on your your watch list. See what it's doing. And I, I'm, you know, I don't even care. Like if you're out there bidding against me in the auctions, I guess. Uh, but you know, go follow it. See what it does. Because I'm telling you, I feel like it is on a trajectory going down right now, and. I think that's the opposite of the direction it should be going. So that's that's my spec. I agree with that, man. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good that's a good spec. And uh, I'll, I guess I'll go next, and I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna piggyback off of yours, Jake. So the 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 first one I'm gonna do is Captain America Sam Wilson number three, and that's piggybacking off of yours because if if and when we know it's gonna happen, uh, Anthony Mackie becomes Captain America, Captain America four. In the the uh, Winter Soldier and Captain America, or Winter Soldier and the Falcon, he handed over his wings to uh, Joaquin Torres, which is going to be he's the new Falcon in the comic books. And uh, this book is from 2016. It's the first appearance of Joaquin Torres, and he later becomes a Falcon. So I anticipate he might come out in Captain America Four as the new Falcon. To and he was of, in the show. He was in Disney. Yeah, Plus. yeah. He but he never. He, but he didn't put the. He, put, he didn't put the wings on. He didn't do all that. I think they'll do it. In, he, he didn't put the wings on, right? No, no, no. no okay. they broke. Yeah. So he gave it to him. I think they'll do it in the movie to kind of have that visual passing of the mantle of both mantles. You know what I mean? So he'll be the new Falcon. So that's the one I'm piggybacking off of, uh, for you. So now, um, about a, what two three weeks ago, I had this conversation with Jake about the Rocketeer. The Rocketeer is already, you know, they, it already popped off. But I, I had that conversation before it came out, before it did this. So I'm not even going to I can do attest that. to that. He talked to me before. We were just talking about old, cool movies on Disney+. Okay. Plus. Yeah, that, that's, that's all we're talking you about. Like, somebody's you know, watching or something, they're going to be like, dude, my buddy was talking about that in like 1972. And like, that's just the way it works nowadays. Yeah. You can yeah. say like. Yeah. Yo, I, I swear, ask this person. And they're like, dude, I was born in the 60s and someone's. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Sorry. Uh, I just like the character, man. I just thought it was like steampunkish and stuff. I, I've always liked the character. So, but in that same conversation, we had a different conversation about another movie that Jake has not seen that came out in the 90s that has not aged well, that is prime for redoing. And it's also a DC spec, which we never do DC. That so I'm going to say. The Shadow Number One from DC, nineteen seventy three. It's a Bronze Age book. They made the movie in nineteen ninety something with Alec Baldwin. It was a horrible movie. It was a funny movie. I still enjoy it just because it's it's a it's a period piece now. <laughs> uh, but that's the first uh, appearance of the Shadow in DC comic books. It's not his first appearance. His first appearance is from like nineteen forty. So that book is, you know, kind of out of hand. It's like a six thousand dollar book or something. Damn. But Shadow Shadow Number One, they're doing the Rocketeer on 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 the Marvel side. It's just gonna take some time for DC to do it. Oh, uh, there it is. No, this is eight. This is number eight. Uh, oh, all right, all right. I, 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 I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I have it. I have. I think I have two by accident. I didn't. I didn't go after them. I just pop, picked them up in some collections. But it's a cool book. I mean, it's a pretty cool book. Uh, it's a Bronze Age book. 
I don't think it's that hard to find. I think it's under 20, I think it's $25, 20, $25 right now. I'm telling you guys, if if Marvel's doing the Rocketeer, I don't think the shadow's too far behind. I really don't. For DC. DC has been following uh Marvel pretty closely. So I like it. I like that one. If they do that, I think they need to redo some of the other ones they did. So like the Phantom. Oh yes, yeah. we talked about that. We too. did. We I brought that because I like the Phantom. Yeah. Dude, I remember yeah. talking about the Phantom and, and Shadow on my show, and like some people were like, who? And I'm like, yeah. the purple suit, like yeah. you lemon before oh, you dude, lemon. the Phantom. Like, so, who? Like yeah. <laughs> so I, I told Jake that about the Phantom that why don't we get one where the guy like you because you know it's it's the sun right that that has to you what if there was a son that didn't want to be the phantom and he's like forced to be the phantom and he's like purple we're crazy yeah he's like or he's like trying to have kids so he could pass the mantle faster he's like come on man, I'm, just, I'm just tired of being the phantom already <laughs> yeah do you remember the trailer do you remember the trailer for phantom it was like it was like the the jungle scene where they're in the car and he's like and then the guy's like i saw the man in purple and he's like and, and the guy's like, so? And he's like, I killed that man 25 years ago. <laughs> and I was just like, that is so lame. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> I, I, can game. you do the oh, whole trailer man. for us? <laughs> do, do the whole trailer. <laughs> Like, ah, yeah oh yeah but that i saw that i saw the phantom in in theaters i remember oh, it was one of my friend's birthday parties uh, but it's so campy good now like it yeah you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I, i'm gonna i'm gonna have to try to rewatch that find a cop I, I don't think it's on netflix or anything like that it's so. got it's got to be somewhere somebody yeah. owns it yeah. so i'll be watching it well i like the picks man i, I really do i like the picks it w- we're in a time where like people are just going to reboot things all the time. I mean, if yeah. we can get like, you know, nine different Spider-Mans, why not have the second shadow or the second Rocketeer and things like that. So, yeah, but I agree with you that the, the shadow was terrible movie. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I was explaining to Jake and he was like, what? Alec Baldwin? <laughs> Genghis Khan? I was like, yes, dude. Yes. You got to go back and watch yeah, that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I still haven't revisited. So, those, those are really good spec. Um, my spec would be um, a book you don't necessarily come across. Uh, two quick ones. Uh, well, one, <clears throat> like Jesus said, he he was looking for, but Fantastic Four 319. I mean, I, I think that book, uh, one is out there um, for cheap. I wouldn't pay the 20 to $50 on eBay for it. But yeah, um, Origin of Beyonder. I think the fact that the Beyonder has like a – Hulk 180, Hulk 181 vibe to his first appearance, right? So some people will say, no, it's Secret Wars number one. Some people are like, no, it's number three. I think that's going to lead people to kind of get that 319 and value it a little bit more because it'll be definitive, right? Like, hey, this is the origin, boom. You're not going to have that argument of like, you know, first appearance, second appearance. Um, Because again, you you look at like the card and what the encyclopedia of Marvel says, it's two different answers, right? Um, there's even articles that say it's three, it's, you know, it's, it's one. So it just gets confusing. So again, cover your bases. Don't, don't forget about 319. Still a cheap book. I found two in dollar bins. So, I mean, now nice. uh, they're, uh, yeah, the, the, they're out there. Um, and the other one is, um, I can't believe I'm saying this. Oh my gosh. Um, Captain Marvel 17, I believe it is from 2000 and, 15, so it's like a yellow cover. So it's the first appearance of uh, Phi Lavel. I think that's how I pronounce it. Yeah. Um, I just think that she's going to be in in future cosmic stuff, Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. It's a very difficult book to find. I think on eBay, there's maybe like three or four copies. Um, it doesn't come up too often, but it, they're out there too. It's just, you know, it's like a $60 to $80 book when, when cool it cover. Does, does come out. Yeah. Um, cover, why, why is it so expensive if it's so recent? Just I don't because know, man. Just not uh, many, it was it was it was specked. It was specked. Yeah, uh, it, it's rumored that she will show, but I mean, people mm-hmm. have been saying that for like ever since so 2019. Yeah, since so 2019. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, that was close. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. M- most of the copies I find are in like that uh, 8.5, 9.0 range, like raw. Um, so yeah i don't know you don't really come across them too much i I don't know maybe people just i mean it is captain marvel so it's like yeah yeah it's still a popular character so yeah 
Cool. All right. Nice. All right. Well, newbie, that's kind of how we usually end up wrapping up the show. But before we head out, I'm going to let you go ahead. Let's uh, drop some of your information. Where can our listeners find you? All right. So we uh, we go Sundays and Tuesdays, 9.35 p.m. Eastern time. So Sundays we do um, new comic book day, comic news. We just kind of shoot the shit. And then on Tuesdays, we have just different interactive uh, programming. So we do things like, you know, Grail First Grail. We do spec talk. Uh, we do, you know, reviews of like the hottest comics of each month. We have keys to invest in. Um, so, so far, Automatic Comics, Mr. Ryan has been our guest on that one. Um, nice. last he's a good guy four. to get. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love talking numbers with him. So, um, yeah, he's a good guest and he always loves being there. So, you know, we have fun with it. We have guests all the time. We, you know, we have an extended family. Um of, of guests that we, we have on. So yeah, it's always a good time. Um, you're always just going to get natural stuff. Uh, we don't fake it. Uh, we're not trying to make it. We're just talking comics, uh, <laughs> occasionally with some Coronas and, uh, yeah, I always say, you know, have the popcorn warm, have the Coronas cold and, uh, don't overspend because those books are out there. Yeah. And this is your, and just so we're clear, this is on your YouTube channel, right? Newbie yeah. comic. YouTube channel. Yep. And you can find me at uh, Instagram or on Instagram at uh, newbie comics. And yeah, we got a, it's about to, I keep saying we, but like I, I consider everybody like, we yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Alfish guy where it's like me. Um, yeah. All, all the guys, but we, my channel has a 3000 subscriber giveaway shortly. So oh, yeah, nice for that. Yeah. So um, big milestone. So yeah, congrats, not bad. congrats, not bad. congrats man. Yeah, everybody go go sub him up. You're going to get a lot of good information. And uh, one of the things that I will say is every time I watch, I'm always laughing, right? You guys are you guys are always clowning on there, having a good time. So uh, and there's a lot of really good information. So, uh, yeah, definitely go sub him up. Uh, if you are also out there and you're looking to find us, I mentioned it earlier. We are on Instagram. You can find us at spec underscore tales underscore podcast. Uh, that's it for the show today. Joel, newbie, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, it, was it, was it was a pleasure. A lot of fun. And everybody out there, thanks for listening. We will be back next week. It'll be Jesus and I, and I'm sure we'll come up with another uh, tale from the internet. And uh, actually, I know we have one because a, mm -hmm. a listener actually submitted one. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll get to that, our first uh, submission. Anyway, thanks, everybody, for listening. Later. Yep.